Welcome to RWJ Barnabas Health's Health Talk Show. I am Dr. Douglas Ashinsky of RWJ Barnabas Health Medical Group. We've become a nation obsessed with weight, but we seem to be losing sight of why we should lose weight. At RWJ Barnabas Health, we take a different approach to weight loss. Instead of emphasizing short-term goals, like reducing the size of your waist, we focus on long-term benefits, reducing your risk of type 2 diabetes, sleep apnea, and hypertension. On today's show, we'll learn more about different surgical techniques, healthy eating, sensible exercise, and support group offerings. We are pleased to welcome Dr. Laura Melman, a fellowship-trained, board-certified bariatric surgeon, to today's show. Dr. Melman sees patients at Advanced Surgical and Bariatrics of New Jersey, PA, an affiliated medical practice with RWJ Barnabas Health. She is affiliated with Clara Mass Medical Center, Community Medical Center, Jersey City Medical Center, Monmouth Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital in New Brunswick, and Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, Hamilton. We are also joined by Sandra Haas, a registered nurse who is the bariatric coordinator at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, Hamilton. Thank you both for being here. First, I'd like the studio audience to uh, learn a little bit about yourselves and your background. So we'll start off with Sandra Haas, who's the uh, registered nurse and is a, uh, the bariatric coordinator at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, Hamilton. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Thank you for having me. Yes, I am a registered nurse. I've been a registered nurse for over 38 years. Um, I started out in the operating room and trauma center. And from there, I've worked on Wall Street, I've worked for some sports teams, I've worked for some medical device companies, and now I've been in bariatrics for the last 12 years. I worked in office for a surgeon from Yale, started a program in North Jersey, and then I've been with the RWJ um, Barnabas System for the last eight years, um, being in charge of the bariatric program. Thank you. And Dr. Laura Melman, a little bit of your background? Hi, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. I'm a private practice surgeon. I've been in practice for almost 10 years now. I did my general surgery training in St. Louis, Missouri at Barnes Jewish Hospital. And then I did my fellowship in Kansas City, Missouri, specializing in bariatrics, which is something called foregut, which is for anti-reflux surgery, basically, and hernia surgery and complex hernias. So bariatric surgery. Basically, we're talking about surgery on someone who is as defined obese. So can you define to us and the studio audience what obesity is uh, and who is considered obese? Absolutely. So the definition of obesity is based on the body mass index. And the body mass index is a number. It's not a percentage or any, any other thing. Uh, what I tell patients to do is go on Google and type in body mass index or BMI. And you can calculate your body mass index. If your body mass index is greater than 30, you have obesity. Of course, then we have different stages of obesity and different levels of obesity, which we'll get into, I believe, in this uh, show today. But what we know from studies is that the risks for other health conditions like heart attacks, strokes, cancers, sleep apnea, diabetes, start to skyrocket once the BMI hits 30. Okay, so as a primary care doctor, I'm an internist, been in practice for 35 years. And as part of RWJ Barnabas Health, we all have EPIC as our EMR. When a patient comes into my office and my nurse does a heightened weight on that patient, it automatically calculates a BMI, a body mass index for that patient. A normal body mass index is considered to be 25 or less. Between 25 and 30, we are considered overweight. 30 and above is obese. Once we hit 35, if they have high blood pressure and or diabetes, that's considered morbid obesity. And above the uh, 40, everyone is considered morbid obese. Reasons for this is that it increases the risk of diseases such as diabetes, heart disease, uh, and other types of uh, diseases. Uh, 
and therefore it is one of the multiple things that we do is what's called vital signs. So when you, when you as a patient go in to see your primary care doctor, one of the things you should be able to do is ask them right then and there what their BMI is. BMI is a good calculation, it's not a, the best calculation. If we're going to really calculate fat, we want to put the person, immerse the person into a, a tub of water, but we're not going to do that in the uh, office and figure out the fat percentage because that's uh, unusual to do uh, in the uh, office. The other thing is if the person is someone who works out at a uh, facility and has big monster biceps, triceps, uh, quads, etc., their BMI may be overly estimated. Yes, so. I agree with that. I will add to one thing about the categories. Morbid obesity starts at a body mass index of 30. So 30 to 34.9 is class one obesity. 35 to 39.9 is class two. And 40 and greater is class three. And above 50 is class four. And then once patients hit the 60s and 70s body mass index, those categories are termed super obese and super, super obese. So morbid obesity actually starts at a body mass index of 30. Okay, what percentage of Americans are considered obese? About 30%, so one in three people have some degree of the disease called obesity. And obesity can affect your health, correct? The thing about obesity is a chronic disease. Many people don't understand or know that that's what it actually is and we have effective treatments to treat obesity, but obesity steals away the patient's life and it's a progressive disease. So when it is untreated, people find that all of a sudden they're on multiple blood pressure medicines, they're on medication for diabetes, cholesterol medicine, they're using a CPAP, they need their knees replaced, they can't breathe, they can't travel, they can't do what they wanna do, and that's, because of the accumulation of all the other comorbidities that have been um, sort of manifested as obesity with the root cause, if that makes sense. So someone comes into my office and again, I get a BMI 35, 40. So I'm going to start them on a good diet exercise program. I'm sure as a bariatric surgeon and someone who has the uh, nurse coordinator at your office, you also have a dietitian exercise program that you start the people on. Is that correct? That's correct. So a BMI of 35 with comorbidities is an indication for surgery. Most insurance plans, as long as the patient has a bariatric rider, will approve that patient for surgery. There are some nuances there. but. In general, the level of, of obesity is severe enough to require a surgical treatment option. But the surgeries don't work in isolation. The patient does have to do a healthy diet, lifestyle, lifestyle changes, et cetera, in order to be successful. Everything in life has, in order to be successful, one has to work at, of course. So again, yeah. starting them on a good, uh, you know, uh, uh, a diet is uh, important. Uh, sending them over to a dietitian and to actually go over diets. Uh, at the RWJ uh, uh, Somerset, they have a very good dietitians there and a diabetic education person who will spend two hours with the person going over a diet, going over, giving them a 10 uh, uh, day meal plan. So following that type of a meal plan is very helpful. In addition, of course, most of us since uh, we're busy with children, work, et cetera, fail to increase our exercise. And since we're putting fuel into the body and not consuming it through the exercise, we're gonna put on the weight. Yes, that is correct. But obesity is not just a calories in versus calories out equation. There are much, um, there's really not too much known about all the different factors, but there is estimated to be about 2 trillion targets for obesity. And so we don't know all of the other factors and have not sorted that out through science as of yet as to why people accumulate the weight and are unable to lose the weight. So that is the metabolic disease of obesity and that's what we offer treatment for. But people do go to our dietitians and they get recommended on a diet that's basically low carb, high protein, an exercise regimen that involves building muscle, building strength, 
those things have been proven over time to help people lose weight and keep it off. So again, what we have is we've got multi, uh, multi-factorial. We've got the exercise, we've got the diet. We also have family history. If someone in the, if you've got parents who are overweight, it's more likely you will become overweight. If you've got diabetes, most likely you're overweight. If you've got heart disease, you may not be, you may be overweight with that also. So I've got someone I've been working on uh, who's, uh, b- who is obese. I've been used, doing something with them for the last six months to a year, and it's really not accomplishing what I want to accomplish. So now I'm going to consider sending them over to you uh, for a uh, consult. So what, does the per- what happens at the time that they uh, first call up your office to set up an appointment? We can start off, uh, uh, Sandy, uh, since you are the clinical coordinator, you can start off because you're probably going to be the one who's going to get the phone call. So when I get the phone calls here at RWJ in Hamilton, I have to find out, first of all, the patient's insurance company, and then I get them set up with a surgeon that accepts their insurance, whether it be here, Advanced Surgical, or down to our sister hospital, Community Medical Center. Um, and then I answer all of their questions. Um, you know, they have a ton of questions, things that they're not sure about. And then we get them set up with the surgeon's office for their initial consult. And then the surgeon's office will go over the requirements for them for surgery. And so what are those uh, pre-op uh, 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 requirements? So each insurance company is different. So it's dictated by the insurance company. Some require nutritional visits for three months. Some require for six months. Some require for eight months. Um, everyone has to have a site consult um, to make sure that they're a candidate for surgery, meaning that they understand what the process is and how it's going to change their lifestyle. Um, and then the, according to the surgeons, if they need upper GI swallow tests, um, they need clearances for cardiac. If they have cardiac issues, they need clearances from, you know, GI, other diabetic doctor. All of that is determined by the surgeon. Okay, so they've uh, gone through all of that process. Now they're coming to see you, Dr. Melman. What do you do? At the initial consult, I go through with them their comorbidities, their goals, what they're looking for, and what they want to get out of having the surgery. And I try to help them understand that surgery is a treatment option. Um, So it's going to require their commitment to doing the diet with the dietitians, the lifestyle, and using the surgery as a tool to make their success happen. Our dietitians are specialty trained in adult weight loss. And so when patients see our program dietitians, they're guided on how to maintain and sustain a lifestyle of purchasing food, having food around, food intake patterns, everything that's gonna be required for them to succeed in a sustainable way for their lifestyle and their family and their schedule. So everyone is able to find a way to do it, but everyone is different. So that is a big part of the preoperative process, them learning how their relationship with food is going to change. Now, you also discussed the different surgical options that they have. Correct. So this is also based on their comorbidities, prior surgeries that they may have had, the goals and weight loss results that they're looking for. And there's basically two main options that we feel are most effective for weight loss, and that's the surgical sleeve and the gastric bypass. And can you describe each one? Sure. So the sleeve is an operation where we operate on the stomach itself. And I tell patients the stomach is a gland. And this gland organ is making some mediator chemicals that go into the bloodstream and perpetuate their obesity. So it's sort of the gland in control of their body weight set point. The disease of obesity is a disease of regulation. Just like patients with high blood pressure can't regulate their normal blood pressure. Patients with diabetes have trouble regulating a normal blood sugar. Patients with obesity have trouble regulating a normal body weight. And a large part of it is because of the glandular function of the stomach itself. So when we cut a portion of the stomach away and just make a sort of a sleeve, banana-shaped stomach, we get rid of part of the gland. And that part of the gland is working against them. They're not going to need it back for anything. And in fact, good riddance, because it's not working for them anymore. We take that portion of the stomach out and leave them with a size of a stomach that's going to allow them to eat a healthy diet, maintain hydration, and do everything that they're going to need to do. 
And it's a surgery that's done with five small incisions under general anesthesia. It takes about 45 minutes. The gastric bypass is a slightly different operation. Worldwide, it is the most commonly performed operation for weight loss, but involves rerouting how the food flows through the stomach and then into the intestine. It bypasses the main part of the stomach, which actually stays in, but that stomach gland chemically goes dormant after the gastric bypass. People that are good candidates for the bypass are diabetics and people that have reflux disease because it can offer a cure for those other diseases as well as help the patient achieve weight loss. So what are the benefits of bariatric surgery for the patient? The benefits of bariatric surgery is that the surgery is the what I call the Rosetta Stone or the key that unlocks the lock for their potential to lose weight and keep it off permanently. So it's a definitive option that helps them normalize their body weight set point but that happens over time. So they have to understand that they're gonna invest in doing their diet and their lifestyle and, and change you know, their exercise patterns and stick to it, use the surgery as a tool to help them get down to their desired weight. And desired weight is basically body mass index around 30, 29, 28, 27 for most post weight loss surgery patients. We emphasize that they want to have muscle and a good body composition. So anything below 30 is considered a BMI that's very successful or 100% success with bariatric surgery. The other benefits, of course, is if it, there was a study done that came out of New England Journal of Medicine and earlier this year that showed diabetics who underwent the bariatric surgery for obesity were able to come off of most of their medications and reduce their hemoglobin A1Cs down to normal, some of them even coming completely off medication. People who were cardiac patients reduced their cholesterol tremendously, increased their exercise tolerance, and reduced their risk of coronary artery disease. So the nice thing is your tool to help reduce the disease of obesity improves the other medical conditions that they had. Correct, because obesity is the root cause oftentimes of all these other diseases, doing the surgery helps them achieve the weight loss and then with the successful weight loss, the other comorbidities start to peel away. So diabetes has about a 90% remission rate with bariatric surgery. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, sleep apnea has about an 80% improvement rate with bariatric surgery. And we're also finding that patients with obesity are at higher risk for multiple types of cancer. And so when they are able to reduce their weight, they are also reducing their risk for developing cancer. What are the potential side effects from the surgery? The main side effects are basically dehydration and constipation. And that's just something that I counsel people in the office before the surgery. And I call that uh, the rule of number one and the rule of number two. So rule of number one, you're going to make sure that you're hydrating enough, getting enough fluid in, making good volumes of urine and making sure that you're hydrated. Patients that get a little dehydrated, start to not be able to tolerate their fluids because they feel the nausea and the queasiness and dry heaves of dehydration. And then it can sort of spiral downhill to the point where then they stop drinking and they become more dehydrated. Along with the dehydration, people can become constipated. And so that's number two. Um, we do have patients on a liquid diet before and after the surgery for a period of time as they're healing. So I tell them, make sure you take a stool softener, that you're paying attention to bowel movements and making sure everything is going all the way through. If patients take care of these things and are proactive about it, there really aren't any major complications that you need to worry about with bariatric surgery. It's extremely safe especially in the hand, as someone like you in your hands. So what, what can ex patients expect? How much weight did they expect to uh, uh, lose with it? And uh, uh, how is their recovery? So patients recover quite quickly from our surgery. We have something called enhanced recovery after surgery or fast track surgery. And we're the first program in New Jersey to institute this for bariatric patients. It basically involves reducing the physiologic stress of surgery by decreasing narcotics, having them do a preoperative carbohydrate load to decrease nausea, getting them up and walking around right away, doing a nerve block to help reduce the amount of pain medication that they need. And all these things help them recover 
most patients that are at a sort of desk job, office job, are back to work within a week. People that are heavy laborers, we require them to be off for four weeks to let the abdominal wall incisions heal for four weeks. But recovery is very quick. So again, that's called fast track surgery and enhanced recovery, correct? Correct. And again, something that someone, something that you do, that uh, it, it really helps improve the treatment of uh, after bariatric surgery. Yes, it improves the patient's recovery, shortens their recovery, and also reduces their risk for things like blood clots and um, pneumonia and other things, wound healing failures that you know we can see when patients have a prolonged recovery. And Sandy, let's talk about what a nurse navigator is. Most people don't know what it is, so explain to us what a nurse navigator is and what you do. So one of my most important jobs is that I make sure that we meet our credentials. So we're MBSAI QP Center of Excellence for Bariatric Surgery. Meaning Can you say that again? So we're Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery Accredited and Quality Improvement Program. That's what that stands for. So meeting all the standards of care for that, making sure the surgeons are all up to date on all of their um, education, making sure all the departments in the hospital are up to date, making sure we're sensitive to the patient's needs and that we're meeting all of the guidelines of quality care for patients. So that's one of the things, one of the most important part of my jobs. The other is making sure that the patients are educated, that they have all of the information that they need for their post-op care. Um, I meet with the patients on the phone when they first call. I'll meet with them if they have time and want to when they come for pre-op admission testing, which all patients come for. And then I'll meet the patients either in the holding area or when they're back up on the floor after surgery. So I'm the one getting them up out of bed, making sure they're doing their incentive spirometer, working with their nurse to make sure that the recovery goes great. I'm also in constant contact with the surgeons, um, making sure any issues that we follow up on it immediately and they're taken care of. So you're the quarterback of the team. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say that. So <laughs> I love I love my job. I love working with the patients. You know, I still 10 years later, my patients follow up with me. It's wonderful to see their how well they do. And the most interesting most patients think most patients say to me is I wish I would have done it sooner. That's something I hear, you know, right after surgery. I wish I would have done that sooner. So tell us about the support services and education that you give the patients after their uh, to help them with their recovery. So uh, we have a support group that we run. Um, all of the RWJ Barnabas hospital systems all have support groups for the patients. We have different lectures each month. Um, we talk about um, uh, reaching your protein requirements, like how to handle the holidays, um, different things to do for exercise, um, emotional part, psych part of it. We'll have speakers come in. Um, I'm always at the meetings because it has to be um, overseen by a certified bariatric nurse to make sure that all the information is correct. But we'll have psychologists come in. We'll have exercise nutritionists come in, all of those people to help support that. The patients are a free place to speak and to ask questions and to help them with their goals. Oh, I also follow up with all the patients after surgery. I give them a phone call within the first week after surgery. Patients also have, um, I have a hospital cell. So they'll often text me or call me. They're at the grocery store. Like, what do you think? This is a good choice. That's a bad choice. So constant communication. The door is always open for them. We're always there to support them. So the important thing is the team approach to this whole procedure. Absolutely. We're all there for the patients. Absolutely. So before we conclude the show, uh, Sandy, you want to tell us a, just a little bit what patients should know prior to going to a bariatric surgeon, especially going to Dr. Melman, what to expect, what the post-op is, what they should, what, what the whole idea of this is. So I'm gonna share that I'm also a bariatric surgery patient myself. I had surgery 12 years ago. Um, so that kind of makes me a little more understand the patients. You know, I tell them that they have to have hit the wall, that they know they wanna do it and they wanna make the lifestyle changes. They have to follow the insurance company guidelines, and sometimes that can be very frustrating for the patients. Again, we spoke about it could take a month to get surgery. It could take a year to get surgery. So I tell them, don't give up. Don't lose faith. We're all there to support you and help you through with that. Um, it will change their life. It will uh, get rid of the, all of their comorbidities um, and just to support them, that we're here for them, You know, that we're not just going to have surgery and then be done with them. 
we're here for years later to follow up with them to make sure they're taken care of. And do you follow up years afterwards also? With patients or myself? With patients. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So since I've changed practices and I've been with RWJ for the last eight years, I still, my patients will come in for other procedures. Some of them will get a new hip or a new knee and they'll call me, Hey, I'm here in the hospital. Can you come visit me? Or, Hey, I'm in the emergency room. I have pneumonia. Can you come visit me? Not related to surgery. We're talking three, four years later, or patients will call, Hey, can you help me get an appointment to see so-and-so? So absolutely. You know, I follow up with the patients, you know, I've been invited to patients' weddings. I've been invited to birthday parties. It, you just get so close with the patients because you're going through so much with them. So it's a wonderful, I love my job. Which is why it's so nice to have such a good uh, uh, bariatric surgery service as part of RWJ Barnabas Health. The fact that it's done right here in the community, the patients know you. The patients are you know, willing to even just talk to you about other things, not even about bariatric surgery. It's not like running across country to do something and you know you're never going to see that person or the nurse navigator again. Yeah, I'll see patients when I'm out in restaurants in, in the community and it's kind of comical because all of a sudden they'll be like, are you looking what I'm eating? I'm like, no, I'm not. But do you want me to? <laughs> and I get I, the same with me, you know. So we have a great group of surgeons. Our surgeons are wonderful, advanced surgical, bariatric. One is as nice as the next. The patients adore them. They know that they'll get a response from them. It's not like, wait, we'll hear from you a week later. So that's a really nice thing, too, to work with a group of surgeons who are certainly involved with the patients. And the patients are happy. They refer people all the time. Unfortunately, with the insurances, that becomes a problem because we don't take all of those insurances. So sometimes, like I said, we have to send them out to some of our other hospitals. But as bariatric nurse coordinators, we all get together at the hospitals. So we all know what's going on. We all follow the same standards of care. We're all on the same page and we help support each other. So that's a really nice thing. And Dr. Melman, last, uh, last thing to tell the studio audience. My main thing to tell people is that there are effective treatments to help them get to where they want to get to with their weight loss. So to not give up and to also realize that we're all in this together and we're all here to help you succeed. And I want to hear those stories of, you know, now I can tie my shoes again and now I can, you know, fit in the airplane seat without the belt extender. And I went to, you know, uh, traveling, you know, with my family. I want to hear all the success stories. And so we're, we're all here for the patients and we're, we're waiting to hear those success stories from them. And the nice thing is you're not an end point. You're just another continuing right. point in that patient's care. And we're not say, telling the patients they're failing. We're telling them we've got something to make, improve their lives. And it's done because right. RWJ Barnabas Health has people such as yourself working for them. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for being part of this show. Thank you for everything you do to help improve patients' lives. Thank you for having us. Thank you. That concludes today's episode of Health Talk. Please remember that the opinions expressed here today by our medical experts are not a substitute for medical advice from your own physician. If you need a physician, please call 888-724-7123. For more information about RWJ Barnabas Health, please visit www.rwjbh.org forward slash weight loss.